Welcome to Understanding Climate with Professor Monks. Today's topic, hurricanes. A hurricane is a major tropical storm system. It brings destructive high winds, enormous amounts of rain, and massive storm surges. Hurricanes play an important natural role in redistributing water and heat around the world, and even help rejuvenate ecosystems when old growth gets knocked down. But human infrastructure and lives can suffer serious losses when a hurricane crosses their path. The same kind of storm has different names around the world. In the Atlantic, they're called hurricanes, from the name of the Taino storm god Huracan. In East Asia, they're called typhoons, from the name of the Greek mythological monster Typhon. And in the Southern Hemisphere, they're called cyclones, from the Greek word kyklos, meaning circle. But they're all the same kind of storm, and I'll be using the word hurricane throughout this video. Storm systems are associated with low atmospheric pressure. When a spot develops low pressure, air is pulled in from other higher pressure areas. The bigger the difference in pressure, the faster the wind, and hurricanes have some of the lowest pressure and fastest winds experienced on Earth. If the Earth wasn't spinning, air would flow straight in toward a low pressure center. But the rotation of the Earth creates the Coriolis effect, which causes moving bodies of air and water to curve in their path over the Earth. This is what gives hurricanes their characteristic spiral shape. Wind flowing toward the center of the hurricane is bent to the right by the Coriolis effect, spiraling around counterclockwise. The Coriolis effect works backwards in the southern hemisphere, creating clockwise spinning storms. Coming together at the center, the air starts to rise. That rising air cools off, creating condensation and later precipitation. Hurricanes form over warm tropical waters, such as those off the west coast of Africa. When water evaporates, it takes up energy. Then, when it condenses again, it gives off that energy. The release of energy from condensation of water is what gives hurricanes their power. The warmer the ocean water below them, the more energy a hurricane picks up. This is also why hurricanes rapidly decrease in intensity once they move over land. Without warm ocean water to feed them, they run out of energy. Hurricanes are rated as different categories depending on their wind speed. The stronger the winds, the more damage the hurricane can do. A storm counts as category one hurricane when its winds get above 119 kilometers per hour. It becomes a category five, the most intense kind of hurricane, when its winds reach 252 kilometers per hour or more. Keep in mind here our discussion of vulnerability. The strength of a hurricane alone won't tell you how much damage it will do. Hurricane Katrina, one of the most destructive hurricanes in US history, had dropped to a category three storm when it made landfall in New Orleans. Things like poor levee design, social inequality, and mistakes made by government emergency managers made the city highly vulnerable even to a weaker storm, plus the fact that it made a direct hit on a major American city. We know that hurricanes are fed by the evaporation and condensation of water from warm tropical seas, and climate change is making the water warmer and thus more likely to evaporate, as well as making the air warmer so it can hold more moisture. There are two ways that we might guess that a warming climate could affect hurricane activity. We might see a larger number of hurricanes, or we might see the hurricanes that do occur getting stronger, or both. Our observations are somewhat hampered here by the quality of historical data. In the past, a hurricane could only be recorded when it made landfall or when a ship happened to cross its path, which makes our data spotty. Having a shorter time series of data makes drawing definite conclusions harder. When we look at the data on hurricanes over the past half century, there is no clear trend in the number of hurricanes. It's possible that there is a trend that's obscured by the high level of natural variability from year to year, but we can't say with confidence that any changes are occurring. When we look at the strength of hurricanes, we do see an increasing trend in all areas that experience hurricanes. There are more Category 4 and 5 storms, and fewer Category 1 and 2 storms. It seems that increased available energy is being taken up in strengthening hurricanes rather than causing more of them. There is also some evidence that hurricanes are intensifying more rapidly as they emerge. Next, we can see what climate models predict for the future. Consistent with our observations thus far, climate models do not predict substantial increases in the number of hurricanes that will occur, and sometimes even predict a reduced number of hurricanes. But they do predict increases in the wind speeds and amounts of rainfall produced by hurricanes. This means that more hurricanes will reach higher levels such as category four or five, and we could see hurricanes of record-breaking strength emerge. Remember that this is an average trend. The high level of natural variability between years 
means we will still get years with low hurricane activity, especially if we're only looking at one region such as the North Atlantic. We should also keep in mind that hurricanes interact with other environmental changes. Recall that sea level rise also increases the risks to higher elevation areas from storm surges. Hurricanes produce powerful storm surges. In fact, a hurricane's storm surge often does more damage than its winds and rain. That means that even if hurricanes don't increase in number or strength, they will still become more destructive in a warming world. It's common after a major disaster event like a big hurricane to see people confidently stating that it was caused by climate change. These kinds of statements are tricky to make if we want to be exact about how we're using scientific information. A hurricane is a risky event, meaning that we can't predict exactly when it will occur. In the long run, the numbers of hurricanes of different sizes form a sort of bell curve. We get a lot of hurricanes with medium strength and fewer that are very small or very large. Climate change could shift that bell curve so that the most common hurricane strength is bigger. But the important thing to notice is that the probability of a hurricane of a given size is never zero in either case. If we have a particularly strong hurricane, it might be one of those extremely rare high strength hurricanes in a world experiencing no change, or a somewhat more common hurricane in a world where hurricanes are getting stronger overall. It's difficult to say with just one storm. And of course, the same goes for other risky environmental hazards associated with climate change, like wildfires and droughts. Scientists can conduct what are called attribution studies to tease out what contribution a trend like climate change made to a specific risky event like a hurricane. But these are complex studies subject to much scientific debate. Even then, the conclusion is usually that climate change made an event worse by a certain percentage, not that climate change caused an event that otherwise never would have happened. So rather than saying this hurricane was caused by climate change, it's usually more accurate to say that hurricane is the kind of thing that will become more common due to climate change. Not as snappy, but better supported by the science.